here we have the last part that needs to be made for my current uh, ongoing build, the Mini Playboy. And that is the vertical uh, stabiliser or the finning rudder. And what I've done, these particular parts need shaping. And there are different ways that they can be transferred. Uh, one could simply cut them out and stick them onto the wood. The problem then is if you want to remove them, uh, that's often quite laborious and you can damage the part doing so. And if you leave them on, particularly on a tail surface, you're adding weight to a part of the aircraft uh, which you don't want to add weight. I could transfer them by pinning the shape through to the balsa, uh, which is a method I use quite often, or I could trace them. You could use a piece of this uh, wax paper to do that and transfer them that way. But what I've done here, I've photocopied this part of the plan again. I've put some masking tape onto the balsa sheet. In this case, it's three millimetre lightweight balsa. Glued the parts on, the patterns on, and now it's dried, I can cut them through, sand them, and then all I need to do is to peel off the masking tape and I'm left with a clean part. So let's begin, I'll cut this part out first. And I never try to cut through in one go. It's best to be confident when you're cutting, but don't attempt to force and put too much weight on and cut through completely. If you do that, you, you can go straight because you use more force than is necessary. That's cutting through now. And the inside cut, sometimes this is the most difficult cut to do, but we'll see. And although this breaks into the rudder area, there's a break here, I've just done, I'm doing it as one part and then I'll cut it clean. There we go, and then there's a diagonal cut here. That's this part cut out. And simply, yeah, that's out. There we have it. I'll actually cut it to length here. So that part corresponds with this part here. And what I'll do is instead of actually, I'll cut it once it's made and that'll help keep everything square. So I'll make this cut once I lift it off the building board. Now I'm quite happy that that doesn't actually need any sanding. But I'll show you now, if I peel off the tape, it's like finding the edge of a sheet of solar film, isn't it? There you go. And it's low tack, so it comes off quite nicely. There you go. There's the completed part. So I'll carry on doing that. I'll cut out these remaining parts, get them onto the board, and then we'll actually start putting in some of the cross pieces and we'll glue this together. Just pause it for a second there. The parts I need have now been cut out, so now it's a case of let's construct this vertical stabiliser. Uh, I always like to start with the biggest parts first, so here we go. I'll pin this one down. There we go, that's pinned down. Now this piece glues on here, so we can do that. Some glue on, wipe the excess off. The cat's treat boxes are really good for just holding all kinds of bits and knickknacks. Go through enough of them because I'm a real 
softy cut man so there we go now I have to use this now I've cut some lightweight wood for this uh, as I've mentioned before you want to keep the weight at the fin as low as possible and as light as possible however because these parts take hinges I've actually cut for these two parts slightly tougher balsa so I'll mark that on there doesn't matter if it's not the exact position I can sand that down when it's done let's cut that and glue use a piece of scrap to apply the cement there we go and I've just noticed it's a di there's a different shaped piece in there um, to hold the control horn so I'll have to think about how I'm going to fabricate that let's have a think yeah these pins go in rather nicely into the um, plaster boarding um, a little tip from Cliff Harvey that one and I thank them for it because I, for many years, was knocking pins in with a hammer into plywood. Not, not a lot of fun. Here's the next one here, which goes all the way down. As I said, this is a slightly heavier, not very much heavier, but a slightly heavier piece. I'm not going to pin through it, but I will actually pin across it. <laughs> I'm going to pause there while I let the neighbour's cat in. It's pouring at the window. Okay, so the cat's in. I can get on and do a bit of modelling. There we go. Glue this on here. Yeah. I don't mean pinning through the larger parts, such as these I'm not keen to pin through the smaller section of wood now I suspect there's a slight curve on this and if this wood doesn't go I'm going to steam it let's have a look no that'll go fine but what I will do, so that I don't um, mark the edge of the wood with the pins, with the pressure of the pins, I'm going to use some bits of scrap and hold them in position uh, using that. I'm going to cut it longer than it needs to be as well, which will aid in the pinning. So if I get some glue on here, you know, it's slightly longer there, you'll notice. I need a pin in here, so let's put a bit of scrap in. I don't want the scrap to get in the way of other parts, so let's see if this will do the job. So I want a piece there. No, that didn't work. Let's try a bigger piece of scrap. there yeah and I need another piece on the inside of the curve there if you're trying to bend wood in you have to put pressure on both sides otherwise it's liable to break it's the way the old uh, woodworkers would work so I need a pressure on there 
Yeah, because if you only put pressure on one side and you don't put pressure on the other side, you can't force the wood to split. It needs to be on both sides. Nip that up there. Yeah, it's going to hold nicely. I'll put a little piece of scrap in there. My temptation is always to um, to reach for the CA and it's not a good idea but, and I'll tell you the reason why. Although a CA will allow you to model very quickly, it has a tendency to be brittle and being a model aeroplane I can't guarantee that it won't come in contact with terra firma without a bump occasionally. And if that happens and you've used a brittle glue, one that hasn't got any inbuilt stretchability or elasticity, then I think you're asking for trouble. That needs to be eased off so I can get this one in. A bit more. That's it. There you go. So that's the basic outline. Let's put that supporting block in there. That's it. That's the basic outline made. And now for the sort of little bit of tedious work doing the infills. And that one there needs to be cut slightly differently to allow um, for some purchase for a control horn. I'm not going to actually do it like that. I've thought of a different way of doing it. I'll pause it there and we'll come back when I've got the other pieces cut and put in. This is the fin, all but completed now. Um, this is my solution to the control horn. I've cut the last piece of wood that I have to put in. You'll notice that there's a small notch cut here. And that's so that I can accommodate a home-built um, control horn that I make out of this stuff. It's PCB, printed circuit boarding. And years ago when I was dabbling in um, radio controlled model steam launches and so on, if I had any electronic parts to make, um, I could etch, I could mark these out and etch simple circuits. Um, basically it's a fiberglass core and I just sand that off. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's on or not really. And I can cut out a purpose made horn that will slot into that small gap that I've allowed and once it's glued in, you've got a, a perfect horn uh, for the job without having to resort to drilling holes and putting bolts through and screwing nuts on. So the last part to add is this little piece. Just apply some glue. And once that's in there, it's time for... A drink, a coffee, or whatever your favourite tipple is in my case. I think I'll have a nice cup of fruit tea. And there you go. That's now completed. Note to self, Mark, leave it alone. I'll let it set overnight and then I'll lift it off the board. And then all I've got to do is line it up with a horizontal stabiliser. There actually, I'm going to put some cocktail sticks in here. And I already have located blocks within the tail surface so that they can be pinned in. And it's not just relying on this surface here to glue to. Pinned in and actually pinned into blocks in the fuselage itself when it's located on. It won't be a removable one. You'll notice here that there are pegs to take a rubber band. Uh, that won't be the case for me. It'll actually be glued onto a platform. Um and it'll be a permanent fixture. And then that will have to be obviously all jigged up and make sure that it's square with the wings. So there we go. That's the last part to be made. I have the fuselage to install the radio gear and then to apply some uh, exterior sheeting on the front part of the fuselage. 
but that'll be left to last because it will make it very awkward for the installation of push rods etc if I put the sheeting on before that's installed so thanks for following I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little build uh, that I've been involved in it's actually provided a welcome break from working on well this beast uh, and it may seem crazy sometimes why you start on that and you haven't finished the other project I think it's important to keep your mojo going sometimes you hit sticking points or you're not sure what to do and just do something a little bit different is really quite therapeutic for me and it keeps me going and sticking some balsa is what I felt like I needed after uh, spending so long masking and painting and so on so I hope you've enjoyed that if you haven't done so please subscribe and then you'll keep uh, up to date with my adventures and it might inspire you to have a go if you can get flying do so if you can't let's get creative bye for now hiya by way of an epilogue uh, this is the fin attached to the horizontal stabiliser um, and as you'll notice I've actually added some diagonal bracing when I lifted it from the plan I wasn't happy at the degree of flex that was in it particularly when the rudder surface was moved and as this will have force insert, uh, imposed on it from the push rod I thought it was important that this was held rigid so with that in mind I've added this bracing a uh, little weight was added, but I think it's well worth it in terms of uh, making sure that the control surfaces are doing what they are meant to do rather than what the feel like doing. So once again, bye for now. Get out flying if you can. And if you can't, let's get creative. Take care now.